Hello, good evening everyone. Welcome to all of you for the advanced audit online session with me. It's Hamza Siddiq over here. Students, during the session, we will be communicating over here. I will be asking questions from you and you have to respond over here. And you can ask the questions about the topic, about the syllabus, or whatever we will be discussing over here. And students, first of all, this is the first day and number of you are going to attend the class, any online session for the first time. I know that. So this is the first day. Some of you may be facing problem with the audio or video. So it will take a few minutes initial to settle down the issues. So I hope you will bear with that. So I just need to know whether you people can hear me. Just let me know whether you people can hear me. Yes. Students, let me know. Yes. Okay, students, remember whenever I will ask a question during the session, uh, please, I, we, I need your response in the form of minimum yes or no, because there is no non-verbal communication over here. There is no non-verbal communication over here. Uh, the reason is that uh, because we cannot see each other and only verbal communication will help us out only verbal communication will help us out yes yes now so students let us proceed further for those who are unable to hear me, for them I have typed over here. Just see here. The only solution is here. The only solution is here in front of you. Yes. Only solution is here. Now. So students, let us start with the discussion and introduction of the topic uh, of the syllabus as well. Yes, let us start with it. Now, for so students, advanced audit and assurance. and assurance yes triple a so then this subject is you must be wondering it has uh it is the subject which is quite uh based upon which is based upon your previous subjects sbr knowledge and FH knowledge, audit and assurance knowledge, it is based upon. Yes. Now, so students, this SBR knowledge and FH knowledge that is required over here. I know it may be have you may have forgotten what you have studied in FH back since number of couple of years back. So you need not to worry about it. Of course, I'll be revising all the major things in p7 again sbr which are basically ifrs knowledge which was used to be called as p2 before student these accounting standards you need to start revising again you need to start revising again these accounting standard knowledge you have to do that now so students Advanced Audited Assurance subject, basically, 
let us talk about syllabus student the syllabus includes we can classify into two major sections one is one is yes one is that is some people have joined recently for them please for them i will i will share one thing with them which who have joined recently to me because they are unable to listen to me so please yes yes the only solution is here in front of you yes It is a solution. Okay, now. Students, the syllabus. Just one minute, please. Just one minute, please. So students, over here, I think the issue of the majority of you have resolved. Now, so syllabus includes the first thing that is the audit of historical financial statements. Audit of historical financial statements. This is the first thing. Audit of historical financial statements. Yes. So students, this is what you have studied in your previous paper of F8. So it starts from acceptance of audit. Then the second is audit planning and risk assessment. Then is, third is, that is, audit evidence. Then it is, review and report. Audit of historical financial statement. Financial statements are usually historical. Now, just one minute, student, there are people are facing problem uh, to be connected, yes. please just one minute please Just one minute, please. There is a student who is facing problem to join the class. Just one minute, please. Thank you for your patience. First day only, first day issues only. Okay, students, audit of historical financial statements. This area, you have to read enough it, but we will study from the scratch over here. Students, remember, this area is very much important. 
audit planning and risk assessment is tested from 18 to 24 marks normally in every exam question number one yes question number one it is tested audit evidence it can be tested anywhere in your paper in any three parts it can be tested and around you will find it from again 20 to 30 marks in every paper normally it is tested audit report is tested for around 15 marks around 15 marks it is tested review and report now let us come to the remaining syllabus let us come to the remaining syllabus now now so students now next second area is the other section is that is other areas which we can categorize into two parts other areas student this 18 to 24 marks can be extended to 20 till 28 up till 28 other areas two sections are there subsection one is ethics and practice management ethics and practice management area it has the following topics one audit regulation audit regulation codes of ethics and uh, audit quality accepting and advertise sorry uh, it is advertising 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 professional services yes professional services professional services now yes professional services now these are the area which are again tested uh, usually from this questions are, are tested in your paper from these areas they are there now the so students around you will find you will find around 20 marks not always sometime 10 to 20 marks in every paper from this area next is <coughs> other assignments other assignments what are other assignments first of all that is forensic audit second is Second is PFI is a topic. Next is social and environmental audit. Audit of performance information of public sector. Publicity. and then is then is that is due diligence again this is tested student remember this is tested in question three of your syllabus question three of your paper this area is tested normally and it is tested again for 10 to 20 marks can be tested 
this review and report area i forgot to tell you it will be tested in question number two it will be tested in question number two all other areas i have told you three things one question three question two and here question number one this is question number one of your paper yes i have told you this already all other areas can be tested anywhere in your paper this is the syllabus now so students next next your paper format question number one 50 marks case study i have told you question number one includes from the question from the risk and it includes normally one part is from audit procedure normally i'm telling you but it is must it is the usual and then one part may be from ethics usual again and any other part any other topic from syllabus topic from syllabus yes can be tested here question number two yes one part is from review and report must one part and any other topic plus with it can be tested question number three question number three yes question number three that is i have told you that is other assignments plus any other any other topic can be tested here yes any other topic can be tested over here now next so students this is the whole paper in front of you the whole uh, syllabus in front of you next the most important thing the most important thing yes what is that preparation of how to prepare preparation how to prepare the subject number one students conceptual knowledge of course content of triple a advanced order insurance one second is good command on IFRS. Second thing, and the third thing is must be able to. Let me tell you. Must know exam techniques. And number four. must be able to apply those techniques and draft answer as per those techniques yes now you see i have mentioned these two separately okay let us talk about it student very important you know p7 has passed global pass rate of this exam term is 30 percent lowest of all papers yes actually you see student prepare this prepare this well 
and then you are prepared for 40 marks. You are prepared for 40 marks. You are prepared for 40 marks. Yes. And then this area, if you prepare it, you see it, it is for 60% contribution to success. If you know techniques and you are unable to apply and draft answer as per those, this knowledge will not help you at all. I know number of students who know the techniques, but I, when I say right answer as per these, they are unable to draft. They commit mistakes. Like mistakes, like they don't know the techniques, like they don't know the techniques. Yes. Now, so student, that's why you will see, it means that in order to prepare advanced audit and assurance subject, in order to prepare advanced audit and assurance subjects, now, students, you must have to be able to apply that. So we will be devoting a lot of time over it after a conceptual discussion of the topics. I hope it is clear to you people. Students, what I have explained. Just let me know any question from your side. Students, any question, please. Any question, anyone? Yes or no, please feel free to ask. Yes, students. Any question, anyone? Yes or no? Okay, writing techniques. We will work, of course, on those techniques. We will be working. Of course, they are part of our, our, I will be spending a lot of time on that. Yes, I'll be giving you assignments. Yes, let me tell you what I will be doing. I'll be giving you home assignments home assignments you will be solving those assignments and you will be sending me those assignments via email and then on random basis i will be picking a sample out of those and will be commenting over that no i don't have I, I, sbr notes please okay i don't have sbr notes for the time being but i will try to find out something for you people okay so i will be picking the sample and we'll be commenting on that answer. What are the mistakes? Usually common mistakes of every students are same. Okay, common mistakes are usually same. So that's why this is how we'll be working. Okay, now, next. So students, let us proceed further. I'll provide you my notes. I will provide you my notes. And my notes will cover two aspects. One, the whole syllabus will be covered in those notes. Plus, the past exam questions will be there. They will include, you will see yourself. I'll be sending you in the next week. I'll be sending you in the next week. Yes. So, next. So, students, let us start with it. Students, the first topic which we are going to study is 
audit let me show you the notes one thing you see here these are the notes volume one and uh, this is for this is the examiner article it is starting with an examiner article and uh, this examiner article is about how to which accounting standards are relevant here they are yes so students this is over here and how they are likely to be tested now next this so this is relevant to you people next is here it is starting regulation of audit regulatory environment for auditor regulatory invent uh, yes environment for auditor so regulation of audit yes regulation of audit so the question is that why auditor should be regulated why auditor should be regulated the question is that students we know that there are number of parties who rely auditors work and they make decision on the basis of that for example for example now for example banks they rely auditors report to give loan or anything like that advances and uh, next shareholders make decision whether to do investment in a company or not government is concerned about the taxation if auditor work is not appropriate those who will be relying on the auditor's work will be misguided will be misguided that's why there is a need that auditor should be regulated there is a need that auditor should be regulated so that people are not misguided at all stakeholders of the company are not misguided at all so regulation of audit is done majorly from two sources two sources one is national laws and regulations and the second is and the second is now second is that is ifac so national laws and regulation the country in which auditor is operating the country in which auditor is operating their laws and regulation define that eligibility criteria these define eligibility criteria for auditor who can act as auditor criteria for auditor okay before moving one thing students as i am writing it down on the uh, writing pad and you are watching it sometimes i uh, move forward in my own pace and if you have not noted down anything which you wanted to note it note down yes which you wanted to note down so you can ask me to stay or go back to the page and feel free to 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 say me like that okay so because i sometime in the rhythm i keep moving forward and you may have missed something so don't hesitate to give me a buzz over here okay that's uh, sir kindly uh, go back to the previous page i have to note down something kindly hold on you can say like that okay there is no shame in like in this doing so now to so define eligibility criteria who can act as an auditor for example for example in the uk there is concept of recognized supervisory bodies rsbs 
that their member can audit member can audit for example in the uk acca icaw they are recognized supervisory bodies their member can audit over there so law defines law i recognize the bodies and in the uk there are further aspects there is auditing practice board auditing practice board there is financial report, reporting council which control and direct some aspects of accountant and auditors auditing practice board and financial reporting council and there is public oversight board public oversight board yes public over which which ensures that companies disclose the companies provide extensive disclosures which ensures that companies provide extensive disclosure of their information yes uh, to the stakeholders now next so students next is so they are actually controlling accounting direct uh, companies and uh, and auditors as well directing so the national laws and regulations may vary across different countries and there may be different provision in different countries regarding auditor and their work so wherever auditor is there in any country auditor has to comply with the law local laws now ifac what is ifac IFAC is basically International Federation of Accountants. Federation of Accountants. Students, it is basically an international organization. Organization of accountancy bodies. Accountancy bodies like ACCA, ICAW, CIMA, CPA more than 150 accounting bodies are member of it they have formed this this organization ifac they have formed this organization now next so what does I, ifac do what does ifac do so that ifac has basically ifac has multiple subcommittees which monitor and control and provide guidelines the auditors and the accountants in the world so multiple subcommittees so ifac subcommittees yes there are multiple but in p7 there are two relevant to us two relevant to us two subcommittees number one is that is number one is iaasp international audit and assurance standards board second uh, so what does it do what does it do this committee actually it issues multiple type of accounting uh, standards multiple type of guidelines one of those are ISAs, International Standards on Auditing. Yes, International Standards on Auditing. What are I? What are what they are? They are step by step guidelines. Guidelines to audit financial statements of a company yes their guidelines isas so they are directing and controlling and you see the work of auditor by these guidelines they are directing and controlling now next second is they have issued multi more guidelines but relevant to our p7 is isqc's international standards on quality control international standards on quality control isqc's international standards on quality control yes 
Student, these ISQCs are basically the name tells they are the system to improve actually they are basically again guidelines to improve quality of audits yes quality of audit isqc again it is a part of our syllabus of p7 Yes, it is part of our P7 syllabus. We have to study. Now, next, let us proceed further. Next, second subcommittee of IFAC is that is IESBA, International Ethics Standards Board. for accountants ethics standard board for accountants iesba what does it do so that it has issued codes of ethics we have studied code of ethics in previous studies again we will study that codes of ethics for accountants codes of ethics for accountants it has issued now Codes of ethics for accountants, it has issued. Now, next. Students, remember, there is a third committee of IFAC, that is, third committee of IFAC. That committee, subcommittee is public interest. Oversight Board, PIOB, yes, this committee, the name tells, oversees the function of these subcommittees, other boards, other sub-board, it, it oversees, yes, let me show you from here, public interest over, yes, oversight of the regulation of boards yes uh, here it is sorry monitoring of the standard setting boards public interest oversight board standard setting boards over and their members the members of these boards are nominated by this oversees the process yes nomination process and cooperation with the national bodies in different countries. National bodies, which are actually overseeing the auditor's work. Now, so students, I hope it is clear so far. Yes, the third is audit committee. Audit committee is, what is audit committee? Students, audit committee, we know that everyone, that is consists of entirely NEDs, Yes, minimum at least three members there should be there. At the end, out of three, at least three members, sorry. And out of three, there one must be finance expert. One must be finance expert. One of them must be finance expert. So actually they work with auditor. So with the external auditor, their nomination, who will be the auditor, their nominate, appointment is by the shareholders. Fee determination, their work scope, what the work they will perform. Deal with audit directors, auditors reservation regarding the any issues there, their complaints regarding management. If auditor need any information, they provide that. And very important, they monitor independence of internal and external auditor of both. Now, the next topic is money laundering. Very important topic it is. Very important topic it is. Money laundering. Now, money laundering is a process where 
process to conceal the origin of proceeds of crime yes the money which has been collected through some criminal activity they want to hide the origin of that company and any step taken for that is called money laundering that is called money laundering now next so student money laundering is basically for example a person receives some money as bribe or some you know that drugs dealing or smuggling or any illegal activity so they want to convert that money into white money black money to the white money illegitimate money to the white to the legitimate money any step taken for that purpose they are called money laundering so money laundering basically involves three steps so steps involved in money laundering yes in money laundering the first step is that is placement so it it is the stage at which when first time illegal money enters the legal system that stage is called money laundering uh, sorry that is called placement now placement this is very important to understand it's very important to understand practical example a person receives bribe and deposit that into bank now illegal money entering the legal system for the first time what may be the other other way for example for example there is an organization which is arranging training for the people and they receive actually 10000 rupees per party spent per participants they are receiving this money yes 10000 rupees per participant and students but when they receive this they record 15000 per participant so recording this receiving this so difference between that is 5000 so they are maybe injecting from themselves their illegal source so this stage is called placement cash based system receiving cash and cash is the ideal the organization which has operation majority in the cash that is more prone to high risk of money laundering is there high risk now next placement second is layering layering what is layering layering is basically students once the money is deposited into the bank a legal system so multiple transactions yes layers of transaction are generated are generated processed multiple transactions layers are generated so that ambiguity is created one money once money is deposited in the bank in one account then transfer to the other then withdrawal deposit to the third bank transfer to the second second to one first from the first withdrawal deposit in the second you see the mess they want to create maximum ambiguity they want to create maximum ambiguity so many transactions they do that it becomes impossible 
uh, to understand the situation. And if they if they are if they are successful in it, then that that was their target. Now, next layering, and then is integration. 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 Now this is the stage where illegal money has taken form of legal money. Yes, integration. It has been integrated with the. It has been integrated with the legal money. Now they can use it for investment, business purposes, etc., etc. Now. Next. So students, over here, let me show you. Yes, money laundering. Yes, a picture, picture, pictorial example. So the collection of dirty money, placement, deposited to the bank, and then transaction. And sending overseas funds as well. Of offshore and loans for payment of false invoices and like that to so students and then finally integration has been done that now they can use that money to purchase their assets investment building etc now the next is anti money laundering regulation in the uk it was introduced yes money laundering regulation what does this regulation says every company should appoint an mlro money laundering reporting officer who is an mlro the person who is expert in the laws regulation processes and all the related knowledge of the money laundering who possess that they should appoint and then whenever an organization is involved whether it is audit firm or whether it is a bank or is a company whenever they deal with any other they should perform customer due diligence know your client due diligence here it is further explained know your kyc who is that client their identity for example student you go to the bank for opening an account they ask for your identity card and they say okay what are your source of funds bring salary slip bring a letter or doing some business bring proof they ask for multiple documents they say bring a utility bill so uh, by collecting all this information, they are getting gathering information about you. Know your clients. And when they are satisfied, then they open the bank accounts. So similarly, when you are going to deal with that client, you should get information about that. Organize that person. That the per what is the person? Who are the business owners? Who are involved? Who are the controlling it? Yes. Sometimes structure is sham, sham structure, fake structure, and behind the structure, you know, apparently some people are doing business, but they may be working for someone else. Yes, and this, so what are their source of funds? This is very much important. Economic purpose. What is economic purpose? Economic purpose means that. Economic purpose means that students, you see a business in your locality, in your town, and you see they usually there are few customers you see seems to be having no sales, seems to be seems to be in the losses. They are in losses. It seems like that. It seems like that. But when you contact, review their financial statements, you see, oh my God, so many profits. 
it means that they are carrying on this business just to show off that we have a we have some business place but they may be whitening their black money over there apparently they are at loss when you see the picture but when you check financial statements they may be they may be whitening their money under the umbrella of that business okay now student is it clear so far is it clear so far let me know please is it clear you are getting it okay now right so students actually this is important why due diligence is important for auditor to spot some unusual business activity because it is auditor's responsibility this is responsibility of auditor that if they have got any suspicion of my laundering they must have to report to authorities report to mlro usually and sometime report to yes uh, report to some authorities but after seeking legal advice because confidentiality principle prohibits them now so first second then this you see report suspicion of money laundering yes maintain specific record yes specific record means whatever you have obtained over here whatever you have obtained over here now whatever you have obtained over here now so students that has to be maintained the record by which you can analyze the person you can identify the person the next is they must have inter now each organization internal procedures the internal procedure one thing is train the staff all the staff that what is money laundering and if you feel if what are the indicators if they are present symptoms there will be money laundering and if you find any such situation what you have to do to whom you have to report internal procedure so auditor will also report to mlro follow internal procedure as well auditor will also follow yes if organization should define that now next the next is money laundering risk indicator so yes these are basically symptoms these are the symptoms if they are present it means company may be involved in the money laundering symptoms yes symptoms of money laundering so students first of all i have written over here cash based excessive transactions company is doing transaction on the cash not the banking channel at all company is issuing on excessive wire transaction from one account to the other second to third fourth fifth and you see here a pattern that the cup they deposit one amount in mcb and they wire it to sbm and they wire it to barclays or they or the wire wire and they wire it back or wire it here right like that their own bank accounts so layers are being generated symptom 
or sometime they deposit an amount and they withdraw the next day repeat it and this, and this is happening every third day the deposit one amount and withdraw the same and this deposit and withdrawal is just below the monitoring threshold repeated deposits or withdrawal what is monitoring threshold what is it monitoring threshold student monitoring threshold is uh, for the uh, central bank of the country bank of country they actually have set a limit for example for example it is 1 1 million mauritian rupees for example if it is 1 million rupees and this means that all the transaction above 1 million and for 1 million they will be monitored they will be monitored for example and if it is happening and if it is happening in this way so students a person a business they are depositing 950000 990000 just to avoid this limit 990000 okay just to avoid Okay, nine point nine fifty thousand, nine ninety thousand. They are doing transactions so that they may not fall in it. And sometimes secrecy, no record, no evidence available. When you ask, they do not tell. The company has made transaction without supporting documentation. And when you ask them, they try to keep it confidential. So again, it will add the risk. Now, the students. Yes, criminal offence. Now coming the last paper question here. Criminal offence in the UK. What is the offence? These are the offences. A person who involves in any way in money laundering, I told you, possess, deal, conceal, attempt, assist even, or incite anyone. Convince others that let us do money laundering. Yes. Now this is for auditor. This is for auditor again. These two. Yes. These two are for auditor. Yes. First of all, is failure of an individual in the regulated sector to report suspicion of money. It is a responsibility of auditor. If auditor feels like that client is involved in the money laundering, auditor must have to report that to the MLRO or other. relevant responsible person as per the laws and regulation yes and then falsifying sorry tipping off what is tip off for example i am the auditor of a company um xyz company and their ceo is mr z is the ceo as an auditor i go them i i ask them so many question about money laundering and their source of funds funds and the reason for logics for transactions my excessive questioning made them make them alert so they may get tip so tip off they may be alert and I, again so if i do like that unintentionally or even intentionally intentionally means that i just give them hint be careful directly or indirectly so th now that so that disclosure might prejudice the investigation of my laundering Now again auditor will be responsible for that that is crime and after being tipped off what mr z will do he will try to destroy document a record alter the record falsify the record so again that is also a crime if they do so so these are the crimes in the uk now students Here is a question in front of you. Past exam question, June 2012. Yes. The question is that. Discuss the implications of the circumstances described above in the audit senior's note. 
explain the nature of any reporting that should be taken place by the audit senior so this is quite easy knowledge based i will discuss it first of all six marks this is scenario based i will suggest to you take five minutes go through this scenario this scenario and students try to figure out yes what what are the implications of the scenario implications what is happening what what will happen what auditor will do first of all what are the circumstances what is happening around and what auditor will do yes and what auditor should avoid so these are all implications so please take four or five minutes then i will solve it be quick Once you have gone through it, do let me know in the chat box that you have gone through it. Yes, I'm waiting for your hint so that I can discuss it. Okay, now let us start it. Let us start it. Students, you are a manager in Lark and Company, responsible for Dorit of Hair and Company, an owner managed business which operates a chain of bars and restaurants. This is your firm's first year auditing the client, and the audit for year ended 31st March is underway. The audit senior sends a note for yes a note for yes your attention okay when i was auditing revenue i noticed something strange i noticed something strange Heron company's revenue, which is almost entirely cash based. Now, this is ideal environment for money laundering. 
is recognized at five point revenue is recognized in the financial statement assets. However, the accounting system shows that till receipt of cash by the customer amount to 3.5 million only. Now, when you see here, first of all, we'll start that cash based system is an ideal environment for the money laundering. So risks are high in that. So they say that accounting system is showing 5.5 million and till receipt in the counter, in the machine, that, that computerized till, it is 3.5. So the difference of $2 million is here, which is a big difference, huge. And they may have, may have, they may have inserted this amount at this place from the illegal sources to whiten it. And you know that it, they are using, they say that it seems odd. I questioned the Abigail about, she said that Jack Hannon deals with cash and post through journal, the CEO, the owner himself is posting the entries, which is quite unusual. And he's posting through the odd accounting system. He's not, they are not booking it in the cash book. In the through journal, unusual way. This further adds to the suspicion of money laundering. And when they're asked, again, his secrecy is an again indication that there is something wrong, like money laundering. Now, at this stage, it seems to be the placement stage of money laundering, where the money is entering to the legal system. Now, where money is entering to the legal system. Next. Next. So second is, student, that is, second is, that is, while auditing cash, I noticed a payment of $2 million by electronic transfer from the company's bank account to an overseas finance division. The bank transfer showed that it was authorized by the Heron, but no documentation. Again, again, the same amount is being void. So, and without any details available, no detail available. So this seems to be the stage of layering. Layering. And when they question him, Jack Heron, he is he is not giving any answer, aggressive, which adds to the suspicion of money laundering. And now after that, they will bring that money back, and that will be the next stage of integration. Now, what auditor implication for auditor? Student, so this auditor senior is saying that he became aggressive when they are asking too many questions about him. That may tip off Jack Harris. That may tip off. Yes. So let me show you the answer. Let me show you the answer over here. Now, here is the answer. Yes. The circumstances described by the audit senior indicates that Jack Harris may be using his company to carry out money laundering. Cash based, making ideal environments through journal posting. Yes, appears that it has been added $2 million. The introduction of, introduction of the cash through illegal activities, the first stage is called, it is called students' placement. It is called placement. The fact that the owner himself posted the transaction. To the revenue and her cash is strange and therefore raises suspicion to the legitimacy of the transaction he is posting through the accounts yes yes suspicion are heightened you see here due to the refusal to explain now you see a layering has been explained integration then 
secrecy is that another suspicion so is lacking integrity now tipping off is has been discussed what is tipping off yes what firm should do yes the firm should think to withdraw from it yes legal advice should be sought now reporting the second part was to whom the audit senior should report i have told you mlro they should report to mlro and they should follow internal procedure and discuss with some audit firm senior members so they should discuss it yes you see here mlro who is mlro yes now so standard form yes so they should report to the proper internal procedure yes so student this is how report so another question similar question was tested in june 18 now that's the end of this student the next topic we are going to start is acceptance of audit the next topic is acceptance of audit students i hope you are uh, getting it what i am explaining right now next next is i will be waiting your feedback because with your help we can further improve the session if you have your suggestion do let me know we have to work over it yes now next is that is acceptance of audit acceptance of audit the next topic students before auditor accept an audit remember whenever a company approves auditor for its financial statement audit auditor checks a few things first of all auditor does not accept the audit immediately rather auditor reviews a few things auditor checks whether are there any issues there any issues related to audit now if issues are there if they are resolvable resolve and audit not resolvable so refuse audit yes now what are those issues now what are those issues students the question is that what are those issues we can classify these issues into two types we can classify these issues into two types one is auditor related issues second is client related yes auditor related issues and client related issues now what what is meant by auditor related issues what is meant by auditor related issues students auditor related issues means that first of all whenever a company for example xyz company xyz company they contact ey ernest and young for their audit ey first of all will evaluate whether they are qualified to act or not by law they are qualified to act whether resource our resources are available availability should be checked now what is meant by resources should resources means staff how much staff is required and how much is present it means skills required competence and skills yes competence and skills required available or not if they can audit the company or not so resolvable means if there is not available can they hire more staff 
staff is short can they hire is it resolvable or not yes this is the meaning of the resolvable now the next is that is client related issues client related issues students first of all that is client screening is performed screening is performed same kyc know your client we discussed due diligence a few minutes ago same is done to know whether it is a low risk client or a high risk client whether we should accept their roles or not who they are who are the owners what is the purpose of the business what are the source of funds what is the background of the business which which wants audit from us so we we, we get information about them are there any politically exposed persons politicians exposed persons in the client if they are it is a risky client risky client client screening is performed students first of all secondly 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 students after client screening, if we are satisfied references are obtained and verified references are obtained and verified and then the third is communication with predecessor auditor predecessor or previous auditor and professional clearance is obtained clearance is obtained what is it i will talk it is also called etiquette etiquette letter let me explain it what is it let me explain it what is it now next students so communication with the previous or predecessor auditor i told you that for example for example ey is contacted by xyz company they wants ey to audit them ey say who are your auditor they say kpmg are their current auditor ey will say okay let me contact with them let me contact with kpmg then they will write a letter to the kpmg and will ask them why you are leaving this company as a client as an auditor and would you do you know any issues for which we should not accept the audit of xyz company this letter is called etiquette letter if there is no response obtained from them or a negative response is obtained the auditor will consider everything and will make the cn whether they should accept the audit of xyz or not so this is called professional clearance or etiquette letter now students once satisfied all this once satisfied all this now next pre conditions for audit auditor will check whether pre conditions for audit means if these are not present there we will be unable to audit means here we are satisfied from everything okay resolvable issues are okay now after that whether okay whether the with the basic things which should be there whether they are present or not pre condition for audit are two over here just see here pre conditions for audit are here i will not write there this i will discuss from it here 
Remember, these notes will be emailed to you in during the next week. Okay, so don't you worry about it. So there are two preconditions, basically, if I say two, because the next are one, yes, and two. So these are basically, yes. Yes, two preconditions are there. Here they are. First of all, financial reporting framework is acceptable as per laws and regulations or not. The company will ask which financial reporting framework you are using. And we will see whether it is acceptable by law or not. If that is not acceptable by law, we say, okay, sorry, we cannot audit that. Now, secondly, Secondly, now this is again precondition that management should acknowledge and understand that preparation of financial they should acknowledge it is their responsibility to prepare financial statements as per IFRS or, or any framework. It is their responsibility, responsibility of management that internal control they must have to maintain so that financial statements prepared are free from statement it is their responsibility and the third they must promise with us that during the audit if we need any information relevant to audit they will provide that to us. they will provide unrestricted access to record explanation or whatever we require for the audit and student, if any one of these two is missing, first of all, whether it is acceptable financial reporting framework, and second, their agreement about three things. If any one of these two is missing, auditor will not accept audit at all. Now, preconditions have been done, students. Next is we are satisfied with the precondition present. Now, auditor and uh usually audit committee usually audit committee which is our senior management audit committees from the management or senior management they sit down they decide terms and condition of audit all details involved they decide verbally first of all and then that is put in a document form the terms and conditions of audit and they are signed by auditor and the management representatives this document is called engagement letter engagement letter this letter is basically a contract and includes terms and condition of audit rights and responsibilities of auditor and the management and all other important aspects of the audit as well so engagement letter is signed and submitted now new auditor is appointed for example the case we are discussing ey is now appointed auditor and kpmg is removed kpmg removed ey appointed now the auditor should ensure that it is mentioned here now auditor should ensure that outgoing auditors removal and new appointment their notices and all the legal process which is which law requires that should be satisfied and to home notices should be sent as per laws whether the company has sent or not they must have been sent now next so students contents of engagement letter and engagement letter we discussed a few minutes ago we are discussing that now engagement letter yes it is here engagement letter has these five mandatory components mandatory means these five components must be part of all yes yes 
it must be the part of every every engagement letter whenever it is prepared it must be the part of that now next now next is objective and scope of audit whether it is statutory audit objective with and what are the areas treatment of comprehensive income treatment of financial position cash flow equity etc everything or sometimes they say okay, you have to audit controls as well for example so whatever is decided between auditor and the management scope area to be covered scope means area to be covered by the audit okay and then what are the auditor's responsibility what are the management responsibility and what is the relevant financial reporting framework and now since in in pakistan in mauritius ifrs has used that will be mentioned over there and expected form and content of any reports usually audit report is there which is issued per as per ISAs, as per international standard of auditing we will study that but but if the management wants from auditor some other reports as well in addition to audit report they may have mentioned over here these five are mandatory components in addition to these five components any other issue which auditor thinks fit necessary for the clarity of terms and condition which management need, need wants that it should be mentioned in the engagement letter for clarity of the things and the matter they are included in it so i have mentioned additional matters this is not a comprehensive list and you need need not to be memorized not to be memorized just you can go through and have idea remember there may be multiple other issues not only this because we cannot prepare a comprehensive list of the matter which should be included over here we cannot do that now next next recurring audits recurring audits next 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 is recurring audits means next year audit what is the meaning of it students we appoint we got appointed auditor in 2019 for 2019 for a company xyz company we audited that company we submitted an engagement letter over here now 2020 the company wants us to be act as an auditor once again the company wants us to be the auditor once again yes if they want us to be the auditor once again so students engagement letter whether we have to submit another engagement letter another every year no not required same engagement letter will serve purpose even we are acting 21 30 50 <laughs> just kidding so means same will serve the purpose the one submitted over here but there are circumstances when in when in recurring audits it need to be revised what are those circumstances remember students remember i told you that they are terms and conditions of audit if there is any misunderstanding about any responsibility anything between auditor and the management it needs to be revised any misunderstanding about scope of audit objective of audit if auditor the company wants auditor to do some additional work which with the previous year was not done so they want to revise to other conditions so then of course it need to be revised i told management sign it 
and auditor sign it. If the management who signed it, the major person, they have been replaced, new management has come. So it needs to be revised. I need my letter. Student rights of auditor, responsibility of auditor change, responsibility of management change, it needs to be revised. If entity, student, we know that auditor is appointed by the shareholders. And if the major of the shareholders change, it need to be revised. Relevant laws and regulations change. Financial reporting framework change or reporting requirement. They want auditor to report in multiple other factors as well, multiple other aspects as well. Then this needs to be revised. These need to be revised. Yes. Next. <clears throat> Next, audit planning, next section, very important, which I'm going to start is audit planning and risk assessment. We have half an hour, we will try our best to do what we can do today itself. Now, so student, the topic, first of all, which I will be doing is audit methodology. Now, you just see here, audit methodology. Students, for example, I want to travel from Pakistan to UAE. I have two options. Uh, this is my target I want to reach. I have two directions available. Okay, I have two directions available. Rather three, even combination as well. One is that I travel by air, by plane. I travel by ship, okay? Or I travel by, for example, from by air plus ship, both option. I travel from my city to the port uh, where the ship departs actually. And then from the ship I travel. So the both combination. So choosing the methodology or combination of methodology, direction, the way the target is here. So similarly, audit report is the target. An audit report is based on audit evidence obtained during the work. Report is always based on evidence. And report is on financial statements. So evidence is also on financial statements. That is also about financial statements. That is also about financial statements. Now, next. Next. Students. Listen, listen please. When we talk about audit evidence, this can be obtained in multiple ways, multiple directions. Or we say that auditor has to detect material misstatements in financial statements, the same thing. Same thing, evidence about fine or, or this, same thing. So multiple ways are available, multiple methodologies are available. And we will discuss all those method, methodology one by one. Auditor can use one methodology or combination of methodology as per situation, as per his own judgment. Now, so let us talk about our methodology. The first methodology is, that is risk-based approach.
risk-based approach of audit. Yes, risk-based approach. Now, risk-based audit methodology. What is it? This approach is that auditor needs to identify those areas of financial statements which are most likely to be misstated. The first thing to be done by auditor is that. The risky areas where chances of misstatement are high. Where chances of misstatement are high. Now, students, those areas of financial statement which are most likely to be misstated, most likely to be misstated. And then, secondly, he must direct audit effort towards those areas. Yes, he must detect direct audit effort towards those areas rather than testing safe areas. Let me explain it by an example. For example, auditor is reviewing financial statements. We know that research and development cost is recorded there. And second is electricity bill. Tell me which area is most likely to be stated. Tell me. Tell me which area is most likely to miss it out of these two. Tell me, please, students. R and D. Of course. So auditor will identify in this way because judgment is involved, complex criteria is involved. So auditor, which similarly, auditor is reviewing financial statement and he's checking that there is IFRS2 adjustment, provisions are there, okay? Revenue, company has, company manufacture a product which takes three months to complete. What high work in progress? Work in progress is complex. So they are li most likely to be misstated. Most likely to be misstated. No. Next. So students, this is called risk-based approach. So auditor will identify all those areas where risk of misstatement is high and will of course will direct most IM over there rather than testing safe areas. This is called risk-based audit approach. Now, next approach. Next approach is, that is balance sheet approach. What is balance sheet approach? Balance sheet approach means that it, is, it says that auditor, the statement of financial position, it includes closing balances. It includes closing balances of the account. It includes. And closing balances, we know that, for example, receivable carry down balance it is here and all the transactions and items they are affecting closing balance this approach says that start testing closing balances and verify all items those affect 
these balances those affect the balances those items all those items which affect verify so transaction will automatically be verified everything will, we know that even profit and loss statement is closed over here so that will also be verified everything will be verified this is called balance sheet approach then transaction cycle approach then is transaction cycle approach what is it transaction cycle approach now Now, what is transaction cycle approach? Students, transaction cycle approach is that they say verify all transactions. So closing balances will be verified automatically. Will be verified automatically. So inverse, balance sheet approach started from the closing balances and verified backward it start with the transaction and verified closing balances automatically so inverse approach auditor can choose as per the judgment anyone or combinations next next is system audit system audit which one transaction cycle it is inverse of balance sheet approach transaction cycle says that we verify transactions verify all the transactions which are occurring during the year or a sample majority automatically closing balances everything will be verified because transactions they generate if sale occur then receivable and inventory is affected to verify transaction so balances will automatically be verified okay next system audit system audit yes so then system audit is basically says that it is the internal control system of client which is used to generate financial statement so auditor will test auditor will test internal controls of client now two chances are there if internal control system sorry same thing by the way so if that system is effective or ineffective two chances are there if that is effective it means that means system is wonderfully working less chances of fraud and error so it means that auditor needs to perform less substantive work tests on financial statements to be performed less substantive if system is ineffective it means high chances of misstatement more substantive tests to be performed more substantive tests to be performed yes so or this is what auditor do what are substantive tests these are tests to detect misstatement in financial statements what are the substantive tests these are the basically i will write here tests to detect misstatements in financial statements Tests to detect misstatements in financial statements. They are called substantive tests. Now, next, students, is it clear so far? Is it clear so far? Just let me know, please. Is it clear?
good now So the next uh, audit methodology is that is directional testing. Directional testing. So when this is performed when auditor perform detailed substantive part of it is part of detailed substantive tests on financial statement and i have told you what they are it is part of that detailed substantive tests on financial statements the auditor is performing that next next so students why they are called directional testing actually these are the two tests which are of uh, opposite direction one is test is test to detect understatement in financial statements understatement or omission in financial statements yes second is test to detect overstatement you see the two directions overstatement in financial statements two tests are there now two tests are there one is that is just see here one test these tests starts from and verified through students just see here i will explain one thing over here for example i go to the company and i on the company premises i count the air conditions over there installed there for example there are 30 air conditions i say show me where they are recorded in financial statements i count i counted myself and if they are not recorded in financial statement, in the, in the financial statements recorded are 25. In accounting record, non-current asset register, only 25 are there. So, so what I identified, understatement. What I identified, understatement. Now, so these are another example. I picked some of the GRN, goods received note of the company or gd for the time being grn okay and i say goods received okay you purchase these goods show me invoice let's say i say show me where they have recorded in the purchase day book purchase ledger where they have recorded and if they are unable to show me it means that purchases are understated purchases are understated so test starting from you see here this is source documents which are not part of financial statements from source documents or physically i checked or physical verification starting from test starting from if i write a one word start from outside accounting record because they are not part of accounting record these two things outside yes then i say 
and verified through financial statements or accounts. I started 30 year condition, show me financial statements, 25 showed. It means understatement identified. GRN not recorded there, GDN not recorded there. I, I, invoices are there, I said, show me they are recorded. They are unable to show me. It means omitted. Understatement, I have deducted. Now, overstatement is inverse of it. Inverse of it. I start from financial statements or accounts. Starts from that. I say financial statements, these are receivable recorded. Okay. Mr. X. 20 million. I say, show me where is the GDN, the dispatch goods, sales invoice, where it is, sales order, where it is. If they are unable to produce me these, it means this is fake, overstated. If they say we have 30 cars recorded in financial statements and the record. I said, show me where there are 30 cards, physical verification. <coughs> Excuse me. And they are unable to show me 30, only 20. Overstated. So verified outside accounting record or financial statements. Test to detect overstatement. Is it clear, students? Is it clear? Now, only 2% responded. It is not clear to others, please let me know. If it is not clear, any confusion, please feel free to ask. Now, next. Next. So, Directional testing continued. Directional testing, student, it is based upon, it is based upon, directional testing is based upon double entry accounting system. That concept means that they say, directional test says that Error or misstatement can never exist alone. They will exist in pair. Because we know that for every debit till there will be a credit. If you have detected an asset which is overstated, it means there will be, overstated means something debited more. Something debited more. It means some asset may have been not been recorded. In. One is overstated, the other may be understated. Or some liability may be overstated. Credited. Or some income may be overstated. Or some expense may be understated. You say for every debit, there will be compensating so if you have detected a misstatement an asset is overstated now find what is understated or liability overstated or income overstated or expense understated now find corresponding entry item now another example if you have detected a liability which is overstated now there must be some debit for that either some asset is overstated or some liability other liability is understated some expense is overstated or some income is understated 
it is like that double entry accounting system they say errors and misstatements they are present in this form now let me show you from here here it is i have mentioned here you see here asset overstated other will be understated liability or or these if a liability is understated some other asset may be understated liability some other liability will be overstated so compensatory will be there similarly now students uh, that's it for today uh, this was my first class in the next class is very much important i will start audit risk and some past paper questions as well now so students just see here uh, in the next class before next class kindly do get registered some of you have already paid the fee and has got registered others please as well get registered because the next class is very much important this is my whatsapp number you may have i have sent through the email as well you can get the banking details from me and have, can register that notes will be sent to those who will be registered during the next week okay so these will be will be sent any question from your side please do let me know any question from your side anyone any question please yes please any question and please feel free to give feedback on the sessions to me and if you want because you are everyone is uh, viewing the things from own perspective okay own perspective and you can suggest me the improvement further if we can do and i'll be happy to listen some good suggestion from you thank you for today see you next week goodbye 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 Thank you.